Kia ora, and welcome to Busters. I realise now I've made a bit of an error in assembling this battery pack. Now, um, I thought it made sense to put the swollen cells at the ends, um, where they would be cooler, uh, in, the, in the potential that, that they could run at a higher temperature, because they may be a little suspect. Um, now the fact is, uh, that's actually not such a, good, such a good idea at all. In fact, what I've ended up doing is causing two groups of cells to be of a slightly lower capacity than the rest of the battery. Now, what that means is that my BMS is cutting off when those cells, um, particularly group number five, uh, when that reaches its lowest um, when that reaches the cutoff voltage of 2.8 volts, it shuts down. Now, the thing is that group of cells has dropped to 2.8 volts prematurely. And really, um, I think, I feel that that's because I've got um, a group of three weaker cells. Now, which leads to the other error I've made. Um, I think I probably should have tested each cell individually for its capacity. Now, that would have taken a long time, a very long time. And th these are brand new batteries, so, you know, they, they, it should have been unnecessary. But they have proven to be crap, really. Low quality. Um, low price, low quality, you get what you pay for. But um, very good price. So I'm still... I'm still okay with what I've got, but I would like to get a little bit more capacity out of this battery than what um, my, initially, my initial couple of cycles is, is suggesting. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disassemble it and take the cells that, are, um, that I feel are weaker and mix them into groups where I've got my strongest cells. Now, to establish that, what I've done was I've taken it to fully charged where um, the balancing system on this Electrodacus uh, BMS, it, it balances the whole way up. Like as soon as there's any charging current, it's balancing if, 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 you know, if there's a need. So um, it, it balances with very, very small balancing currents, um, but still achieves perfect balance at uh, top of charge. It fully charged it perfectly balanced so I knew that at full charge it was balanced and now I've discharged it to 50% um, for a couple of reasons one is that's enough um, for them to get a little wee bit out of balance and, and I can I can measure that that slightly out of balance uh, at that at that level of 50% charge and two because no matter how long this process takes 50% um, charge they, they could sit there for a year 50% charge and, and theoretically suffer no damage so um, then I've disconnected them disassembled the pack or, or, or disconnected the pack so that they are all sitting there as individual cells and left them sitting for um, about 24 hours. What that should do is that should enable them to settle on their own individual cell voltage because at the point I disconnected them they are at a group voltage where all three parallel cells were essentially at the same voltage. And that's how the battery is going to work. It's got three cells that will be at the same voltage um, and they're in series with lots of other packs of, or groups of three cells. So what I'm going to try and do now is based on the resting voltage after they've sat there for 24 hours, fully disconnected from everything else, having been fully charged and perfectly balanced, means that I'm looking at them essentially um, as well, I'm essentially being able to see uh, their relative, uh, what's the word, strength for, for want of a better word, capacity even, you know, because their, vari their varying voltages right now, the, 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 the slight imbalance that they have, which I think is, um, you know, from the best to the worst is less than uh, 100 millivolts or something like that. I can't recall. 
but looking at their varying voltages right now, if I rematch them into groups that essentially means that each group has got a similar voltage, then I guess what I'm doing is mid-balancing the pack. Now, I don't know, um, that's a phrase I've just come up with because maybe it's not a real thing. But that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take these, these half empty cells and match them up so that I end up with groups of three that have got a similar voltage. On the theory that that means I've got a nice mix of stronger and weaker cells in each group. Now, when it comes to um, series, you really want all of the batteries to be the same, which is what the balancing is all about. So you don't want to have a strong cell in series with a weak cell. Um, all that means is that you'll end up with the capacity only of the weak cell. Now, um, in parallel it's a little different, I think, because they will then share the load, um, but, but still be at the same voltage as the other cells, then the stronger cell will pull the voltage up of the weaker cell. Um, you'll obviously have a reduced capacity because you're still only as strong as your weaker cell to a certain extent, but I think I think it'll kind of carry it better. Um, I don't really know quite how to describe how I feel it would work, um, but because they're sharing voltage, they're sharing a common voltage, and then uh, both batteries are releasing their their capacity in terms of their current holding capacity. Um, I feel like that's the ultimate uh, the ultimate situation for setting up my battery pack. You know, just bearing in mind that I've got some weaker cells, some stronger cells, I can I can fully identify which is which right now. So I'm going to mix them and uh, end up with a medium strength pack. What I won't then have, which is a, the, the key to this, is that then I won't have one group of cells that is all weak. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to avoid any one group being weaker than the other group, which is essentially the same as trying to avoid one cell being weaker than any other cells, because I'm using the other cells as a crutch. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. Of course, as a disclaimer, uh, you already know I'm no expert on this or anything else to do with building this bus, so I'm learning as I go. Um, and uh, what I've learnt now is that I shouldn't have done it the way I did it and hopefully what I will learn from this is that I've nailed it. So I'm going to check the voltage of each cell. This one's 3.265 This one's 3.253 so they all vary slightly. I'm going to pick out, um, cherry pick the best, mix them with the worst, so that I should hopefully end up with a whole bunch of packs that are of a similar voltage. So that's pretty straightforward really, one swaps of 11, seven, goes to where 2 was, but it's replaced by 3, which is going to where, well, which is replaced by 13, which comes from over here, which is replaced by 17 and 14 says, anyway, um, I've shuffled them all around. So now <clears throat> we are back to the right configuration and hopefully better balance in terms of capacity. <clears throat> so they've already been top balanced and they're top balanced every single time they are charged. Um, but now I'm matching capacities to hopefully nail that. And hopefully that's where I'm at now. Only way to tell for sure is to put it all back together and crank it up.
Look at that giant fuse, eh? Beautiful. Now, of course, I'll, I need to cover these with I don't know, some heat shrink or something. I haven't, got, I haven't got anything big enough to go over that as yet. So, um, being that that's a positive terminal, it really needs to be covered up. Now, um, yes, I've got my laptop sitting on top of my batteries. It's actually not as dangerous as it looks. It's sitting on top of a fiberglass panel there. But um, I kind of I kind of get a kick out of you know putting an aluminium laptop on top of the most dangerous toy I have in my garage. Something kind of appeals to me. Anyway, the reason I've done this is to show you the spreadsheet. And this is how I've gone about rebalancing my pack mid-charge, mid-balancing. Like, oh god, what would you call it? You could only call it mid-balancing. Now um, I've explained why, this is to explain how. So what I've done is I've mapped out the individual cell voltage for the 24 cells and the, the, the block voltages. Now it's the block voltages or the, or the group voltages that I'm worried about. And the fact that, um, of course, this, this is not entirely true because these are not real voltages in the sense that that's what they would be if I added them together. They are in fact in parallel, so they are actually running at um, well, parallel voltages. So what I'm trying to do is to reconfigure the pack to better balance my groups. So I've established what, if I added all the groups together, I can see that I've got weak groups which are in red and strong groups which are in green. The numbers themselves aren't necessarily that important um, other than I'm, I'm trying to get them all in balance. So I've, uh, having numbered my cells uh, from 1 to 24, I've worked out that I want to try and get together some weak cells and some strong cells to give me groups that are of similar capacity. Now the assumption I'm making here is that these voltages are representative of the capacity that this cell has. I've used up half the capacity, this is the voltage I've ended up at, and so this is indicative of just how much capacity I actually have in the cell. So I've shuffled them around, moved them around, ended up with a slightly distribution, slightly different distribution. I've got, I've put, tried to put strong cells with weak cells, tried to kind of balance them out so that actually each group of cells has a similar voltage, and that's and that's kind of what I've ended up with there. So I, I, I've got no better way to describe it. I've mid balanced the pack now. This is a pack that was already top balanced, so I know that when they're all fully charged, they're going to be, you know, within cooey of each other. And it's it's a BMS system that balances them the whole way up while they're charging. So the moment it gets over 3.2 volts, any variance more than 10 millivolts is going to start balancing, and it's going to continue balancing until it reaches the top. So I know it's going to end up even at the top. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get it nearer to even at the bottom trying to take those strong cells, mix them with weak cells, so that I get balanced groups of cells. Um, and that's, that's what I think I've done. Now, when I've reassembled this pack, um, I've reassembled it, left overnight, measured it again, so I get 3.254 to 3.250, a difference of just four millivolts across the uh, eight different groups. So it's looking pretty bloody good. Took a few cell shifts. Um, I've taken the opportunity to cut up some of my original links. Look at that, that's a link that came with the battery that run between the two cells and that's its comparison to the links I'm using now. My homemade DIY links, you know, Anyway, so I've cut up a few of them and I've used them because I don't currently have any terminals that can handle this kind of wire. In fact, I don't have any terminals at all. Um, so I've used them and soldered my balance wires to them just to make my balance wires a bit stronger and removable. So I've put all my balance wires back in. I've reassembled the pack completely. I've actually re-annealed all of my uh, links 
um, so that they are as soft and as uh, and have the highest conductivity I can give them before putting them back into this pack. Now I've replaced this one, which was like this one, with one that comes up and around the corner and into my super fuse, and the super fuse then goes to um, you know, to, to my cabling, which goes to the shunt and all the more shunts and everything else. So this is all back together now. Now I have been charging this for um, I don't know, maybe about three or four hours, and it is still less than 10 millivolts out of balance, and it has not yet even kicked in the balancing. Look at that, That's look at that line there in the center of the screen. That line there is showing the eight cells of the battery, and you can see the voltages there on the left. They're all, well, they're all within eight, Eight, nine, it's just a flash of 10, you know, like it's probably gonna start balancing soon. But this has been cranking away at uh, 200 watts for a while now and nothing. So it's looking quite good. Of course, the proof of the pudding isn't in charging, it's in discharging. And that's not gonna happen until we hit 100%. We're sitting on 53. Uh, 200 watts that is um, just under 8 amps and uh, if we're well because I've disconnected this it started at half so I don't really know how much um, capacity I'm at but I'm guessing it's going to take all night and you know funnily enough my charging circuit really does look like I drew it. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to let this charge. That's going to take uh, probably all night, maybe all day, maybe all night and all day and all night. Still under 10 millivolts. Loving what I've done there. Way smarter way to put together. I don't know what came over me when I thought I'd put all of the swollen cells together. Should have known they were weak. Of course, it's a brand new battery. There shouldn't be any weak cells, you know. This is sketchy. This is a sketchy purchase. I'm very happy with it, but then I'm not trying to use it the way it was designed. So to me, it's just a cheap source of parts. So thanks for watching. That's ready to give some real loads. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit all the buttons, like and subscribe. Um, maybe you'll find something you want to watch up there. Uh, otherwise, uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care. Matiwa. Well.